Please join me in welcoming Carl Turner. Thank you very much indeed for that very uh, kind, warm introduction. I'm bound to say I'm delighted to be back here at the University of Hull. But I must say, as I parked up uh, and walked past the uh, Brimmore Jones Library, there was a degree of trepidation. I remember spending hours on end in there with, in fact, my colleague Joe, who was at university with me, struggling with jury's prudence and um, using air uh, knowledge most of the time to assist me with my studies. But it is uh, really uh, an honour to be here at the university speaking uh, in this uh, debate and this uh, issue. Um, look, I just want to start by thanking the Citizens Advice Bureau for the work that they do. Leslie has been a fantastic supporter of me as a Member of Parliament and indeed all of the people, the volunteers and staff at Citizens Advice Bureau in Hull have helped me as a Member of Parliament to assist my constituents. We run an advice surgery at my office in East Hull monthly, which the CAB provide. So I want to thank them for that. I'm going to talk briefly in a minute or two about some of the constituents and the clients that they see on my behalf and the issues that they deal with. But I also want to thank Advice Forward Partnership. Before I go on to mention that, Deborah, if you don't mind, I just want to correct something in your introduction. I'm not, in fact, the chairman of the old party parliamentary group on legal aid. I was succeeded when I was appointed as the shadow uh, attorney general, succeeded by, uh, succeeded rather, by Jeremy Corbyn, uh, very briefly, who is, of course, um, in the election for leader at the moment, and then I think succeeded very recently by my friend Keir Starmer QC. The APPG on legal aid has done an awful lot of work to highlight the issues of advice in these areas. You can see um, what the politics of that APPG might have been, given that Jeremy Corbyn was delighted to take over the chairmanship from me. Um, uh, which is probably one of the reasons, no doubt, as uh, the APPG produced its manifesto going into the 2015 general election that my uh, friend Ed Miliband was very keen for me to resign my chairmanship and hand over to uh, my friend Jeremy Corbyn. But on a serious point, you know, the way that we did in that APPG, uh, I think, highlighted to uh, the government the value of advice and assistance in this sector. And I just want to mention some of the stuff that the CAB do in my constituency. 69% of the cases that they see on my behalf are debt issues. Uh, problems with debt generally, but they deal with a, a number of people who come along who are absolutely in a complete state of panic and uh, you know, a, a short appointment with an expert advisor uh, ends very often in them writing off an awful lot of debt through such as debt relief orders. Um, the other uh, number of people, I say 14%, I think, are people for benefits advice. 3% is housing, and 3% employment. It might be underemployment, zero hour contracts, people being messed around by employers who will text them shortly before they're due to begin a shift and uh, advise them that they're no longer required uh, for that job that particular day. It's an outrage, I think, that this is happening on the scale that it's happening in this country, which actually, in relative terms, is very wealthy. The average indebtedness in East Hill is about 10,000, in fact, it's exactly 10,336 pounds. Uh, the CAB have helped write off 5.2 million debt between 2014 and 15 in this area alone, in that constituency alone. I just now want to speak about legal aid and I suppose its relationship with poverty. Since 2010, this uh, initially Tory-led government, coalition government, 
have attacked civil legal aid on a scale which was completely unprecedented. They've taken £600 million out of civil legal aid. That's housing, employment, benefits, immigration, judicial review, mental health, prison law, uh, and most areas of family law. And, you know, when you think back to the general election in 2010, uh, advice and assistance, money from central government provided for that, was at its highest level ever. So you need to look at where we uh, were and where we are now. 90% uh, less assistance from the government in these areas is what's happened with this government. Um, I think when I was watching the slides, one of the slides that were up said that for every uh, pound spent in this area from central government, say it's £1.51 to the taxpayer, I think that's wrong, frankly. I don't think that takes into account the fact that the services on the NHS, mental health and other areas are also um, uh, benefiting from that advice and assistance in terms of saving money. And I think our figures, the figures that I've been talking about in Parliament and certainly as the chair of the APPG on legal aid, we were saying that actually for every pound spent it saves about £8.80 to the taxpayer, to the treasury. These attacks on uh, advice and assistance and legal aid have meant that the system now is do it yourself justice rather than access to justice. And when Lord uh, Colin Law says in his fantastic report that the basically says that, look, this uh, reduction in assistance costs more in the long run. He is absolutely right about that. I think actually, you know, I think it's fair for me to say that the, uh, the, the Labour Party running up to the 2015 general election didn't make enough of that. We didn't shout enough about the fact that actually putting money into these areas saves everybody, not just, you know, it's not just morally the right thing to do, it's economically the right thing to do. And it's a criticism, I suppose, of my colleagues in the Labour Party, because I think we ought to have banged uh, the drum harder and louder for that fact. We ought to have been saying, look, this saves money. It's actually a cost saving to the country if you put money into these areas. I don't criticise the previous Labour government because actually we were brilliant in terms of this. We put a lot of money in. We weren't profligate as the Tories uh, suggest that we were. The money that was spent in this area was actually good value for money. Uh, speaking of money, I just want to sort of mention now the recent budget of George Osborne and the effect that it has on my constituents. Ray Davis mentions it in the very instructive presentation. But this is what it means to my constituents. Low paid uh, workers who are benefiting from tax credits will lose something between 20 and 30 pounds a week. That the non-working benefit tax reduced to 20,000 pounds a year, I think as Ray said in, his, uh, in the video, it means that it cost them 67 pounds a week. People who are on ESA, um, the Work Related Activity Group, will lose something like £30 per week. That's without mentioning, of course, the bedroom and the council tax, which um, has already uh, been in for some considerable time now. As uh, speaking as a criminal lawyer, I've got to mention, I think, it's only right to mention criminal legal aid. We're at a position now where criminal lawyers, solicitors and barristers are taking unprecedented action in striking. You know, it's incredible to see barristers outside of court centres up and down the country with wigs and gown on, with placards as if there's some, you know, the Tories want to portray us as some militant, you know, trade union, the Criminal Bar Association and the, uh, the uh, Solicitors 
uh, representative groups. You know, the try to portray as, as Arthur Sk Skargilesque run organisations. The reality is this. You know, the government are about to take 17.5% cuts to criminal legal aid. You know, the people who are doing this, I think Donna's words were absolutely spot on when she said, people don't do this just because it's a job. People who get into this area of legal work, publicly funded legal work, whether it's civil or criminal, do it because it's actually a vocation. They do it because they want to help people. There's currently 1,600 contracts from the Legal Aid Agency for duty solicitors. So that's if you're arrested and taken to a police station and you've not been in trouble with the police previously, you ask for a solicitor, the custody sergeant will contact the duty solicitor. So we're going from 1,600 contracts to 526 contracts up and down the country. There's only one reason. There's only one reason for that. It's not about saving money. It's ideological. It's about providing a situation whereby only the huge corporates such as G4S and Serco, and I kid you not, Eddie Stobar, Transport, all of you, can provide, apply for LA contracts and provide advice and assistance in criminal situations. It is an absolute disgrace. And we need the Labour Party and other people in Parliament, uh, people who are non-political as well in Parliament, crossbenchers in the Lords, need to come together and fight this vicious attack from this Tory government. I just want to mention as well human rights. We have a situation, I don't think people appreciate it, I get frustrated when I try to explain the situation. We've got a situation now by, whereby the government, the Justice Secretary, Michael Gove, who actually is a decent man, anybody who's met him and knows him would say he's a decent, decent chap, he's charismatic, he's charming, he's, in my view, uh, much better than his predecessor, Chris Grayling, who uh, got the title, I think, well-deserved title of Failing Grayling. Um, Michael Gove's more charming. But the reality is, we've got a situation where the Justice Secretary is now saying that we're going to be scrapping the Human Rights Act and replacing it with a Bill of Rights. What he can't say, I've asked him in Parliament myself, what he can't say is whether or not the United Kingdom will be party to the European Convention on Human Rights. I mean, people I don't think appreciate the fact that the Human Rights Act, and indeed the European Convention, on human rights is not used as the Daily Mail would have us think. It's used very regularly by the most vulnerable in our society to take on such as local authorities, to take on public authorities in terms of disability discrimination, to fight the NHS when they get it wrong, frankly. You know, doctors and nurses and Medical professionals do their damnedest to ensure that people who they're caring for are treated properly. But sometimes they get it wrong. People in the legal profession get it wrong as well. But these are the most vulnerable people in our society, taking on huge, massive organisations. And they do that very often by using the Human Rights Act. Another terrible, terrible um, plan of this government is to, uh, they've introduced already court fees in criminal law. So an example which came to me recently was a guy who had stolen, uh, he pled guilty to stealing um, a can of, I think, Diet Coke. The value of the can, it must have been an expensive shop, was I think £1.10. pence. He was interviewed by the police. He admitted the theft, saying that he was thirsty and he needed a drink. He appeared before the magistrate's court. The fine would have been 15 quid. 
with the uh, victim impact surcharge of I think again 15 quid. The court fee for that was £150. We're going back, it sounds shocking, but we're going back to the situation where we'll be introducing debtors courts into this country. It's an absolute disgrace. Tribunal fees. So a, a, a scenario which I like to use when I refer to employment tribunal fees is a woman who's been in employment, not necessarily for the two year period, which is necessary now because the tour has changed a lot, it used to be 12 months, it's now two years. But say for example she goes to her employer and says I'm pregnant, um, you know, you'd expect her employer to be a reasonable employer in that situation, but not all employers are. So the employer decides to sack her. It'll cost that woman £1,600 to get her case to a tribunal. That's just the court fee to get the case before an employment tribunal. And take into account the fact that she's got no assistance prior to going to the tribunal with legal advice. Legal advice, actually legal aid, it's bound, bound to say, was never available to advocacy in employment tribunal situations, but just to advise prior to the employment tribunal hearing itself. And it very often paid for itself, because somebody would go along to a solicitor, there'd be uh, uh, an interview with an employment lawyer who, advise, uh, who would advise on the strengths and weaknesses of that case, and very often it helped uh, as a safety net to stop cases going to tribunals. So the government, in the wisdom, I believe, thought, well, actually, there's going to be uh, more people going to tribunals, bringing cases, so what we'll do is introduce this fee to stop them. It's an absolute disgrace that it would cost a woman who has been dismissed unfairly, uh, unfairly by her employers for having the audacity to want to have a family um, £1,600 to get her case into a tribunal. I just want to finish on saying this, and I know this has been streamed, so people, my colleagues, my senior colleagues in the Labour Party will probably be a tad nervous at this stage, but I am going to criticise the Labour Party prior to the last general election. We didn't do, frankly, enough. We didn't say enough about this area. We didn't make enough of the fact that the Labour government, previous Labour government had spent a lot on social welfare, uh, legal aid and advice, and actually it was value to the taxpayer. We didn't criticise enough the Tory-led coalition government going into the last election for the savage and ideological attack on social welfare advice and assistance, and the Labour Party must do better. We must do better in this period of opposition in order to highlight the issues, we must have a plan and a strategy and a proper solid policy going into the 2020 general election. And I'm bound to say that I'm a member of parliament and of course we all support various candidates in the election, but I'm delighted that the candidate I support, Andy Burnham, has today produced his manifesto for the election, uh, the leadership election. And he's invited Lord Woody Bark, uh, who is the Shadow Attorney General, to do a review on civil legal aid. Uh, I spoke with Willie before coming uh, this morning, and uh, Willie asked me to pass his regards to Lord Colin Law and to mention to Colin that the report that Willie will be doing will be um, building on uh, the work of Colin in his uh, excellent report. I described it to Willie Bark as plagiarism and he said yes a little bit, but building on Colin's fantastic work. When I spoke to Colin as I arrived at the, uh, today's event, I mentioned to Colin that um, Willie Bark and Andy Burnham had planned to build on his good work and he uh, was very flattered. He said to me, um, Pinching is the very height of flattery.
Thank you very much for the work that you've done, Colin. Uh, it's been fantastic working with you in Parliament. I know that you are respected very highly across the board in Parliament by uh, colleagues of all political persuasions, and I'm delighted to have you on board working with others to um, ensure that people get access to justice and advice where it's most needed. Thank you very much.